live i think we are live yes okay are we live yeah so hello good evening everyone welcome back to t talks uh, tuesday once again and uh, it's a great privilege uh, uh, for us today to have uh, uh, dr chaya mishra with us and uh, today uh, uh, chaya mishra is going to happen to us uh, and <laughs> <laughs> that she will explain why it is so but uh, today we are going to deal with a very common Uh, a complaint or common uh, test report that we keep seeing that is yes. calcium yeah uh, uh, vitamin d deficiency and b12 deficiency so over to mayuri to introduce uh, uh, dr chai mishra thank you doctor and good evening one and all welcome back to another interesting episode of tea talks tuesday so today i'm here to introduce uh, dietitian chaya mishra uh, chaya mishra is a consultant nutritionist clinical dietitian diabetes educator and a holistic health counselor she is the founder of nutriherbs.com and graduated from uh, kidwai memorial institute of oncology bangalore she she worked as a lecturer in the unity health complex mangalore and also worked with indian council of agriculture research uh, mutkeshwar nainital uh, and then uh, she held a scientific post in baba atomic research center at mumbai now then later she uh, she moved to prayagra Pray- prayagraj uh, and she did her post graduate in nutritional sciences from alhabad university and uh, she holds her re- uh, coming to her research work uh, she did clinical trials in high dose of cl- calcium supplementation in pregnancy induced hypertension that was a game changer in the city and led to the led her to practice as a freelancer and presently catering to clients from us to australia and pan india she is a speaker at international obesity congress 2018 in philip uh, philadelphia uh, with an international publication on dietary counseling in combating om- obesity uh, national uh, she has national publication on dietary approach to manage dyslipidemia in 2018 and she is a life member of idn iscn and uh, she was featured on a- aar all india radio fm twice on a talk show on nutrition and she was also uh, on national TV, news tv channels like abp news uh, news 18 and news ahead also on digital news channels like new uh, news now nation uh, she uh, she is also featured on uh, newspapers like amar ujala and dainik jagran so she is actively involved in mission nutri covid uh, during worst hit period of covid along with the other entrepreneur nutritionists across the country Uh, so her passion is to transform lives through the art of science of nutrition and lead by example so here chaya, chaya mishra we welcome you on to the uh, tea talks over to you chaya thank you thank you mayuri and uh, thank, thank you very much dr janki for giving me the opportunity to talk uh, in this platform which is uh, exclusively meant for dietitians and where we share our knowledge Uh, enrich each other so it's a beautiful platform and i must say i'm an ardent fan of you both uh, because you you are such a wonderful combination and uh, the pertinent voice of dr janaki you know is something i admire a lot oh uh, thank you which, which is just in contrast contrast to mine which just keeps wavering along with the emotions and you're so constant with the same frequency <laughs> so that's something thank i really you. admire about you Thank and you so uh, well uh, uh, now let's just uh, get to what we should be what we are here for uh, so i'm sure uh, the audience are here and now should we go ahead uh, yes. yes 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 and, and uh, thanks to mayuri for having me and uh, you know suggesting me to be here so thanks a lot mayuri it's a pleasure <laughs> thank you So, is the screen sharing on, uh, Mayuri? Yes, yes, yes. So, all right. Yeah. All right. So, well, um, let's start with this. Uh, uh, the introduction is already over. I think we should move ahead. And uh, before we go ahead, uh, let me have a few disclaimer. So, uh, to be very frank, um, I may disappoint you. I'm not sure. Uh, not with the content uh, the content is fine i'm sure you will uh, accept it but i'm very poor at making ppts and uh, so even, even with this i took help of my intern 
However, I won't be talking about the sources of food as uh, it generally happens in any dietetics uh, uh, conferences and CME. Also, I won't be talking about the discovery of uh, the nutrients, the history, the metabolic pathways, and so on and so forth. And it's going to be a very uh, informal presentation where we will uh, give and take, learn from each other. However, I think I would be able to ring a bell, which is the need of the heart for the nutrients we're going to talk about. And of course, there should be a call for action, right? So let's go ahead. So we, uh, the past two years, uh, where the pandemic uh, coronavirus hit us hard, one thing that came like a medicine was vitamin D. And then we all realized how deficiency of vitamin D was also a pandemic. So this is again from the American Journal of uh, Clinical Nutrition. Uh, so this is well accepted in the present scenario. And I'm sure we do see this in our day-to-day -day practice. So coming to how the prevalence of deficiency, if you look at this uh, chart, uh, you know, the, the map, from every state, whether it is north, south, east, west, you see the kind of uh, deficiency that is prevailing from 70% to 96, I think maximum 97% here, 96%. So nearly, even if we take a talk about an average adult, it's really hit us hard, which we didn't even realize over years. Uh, Chaya, sorry yes. to disturb you. We are not able to see the screen. Okay. I'll just uh, screen share. Are you able to see this? Yes, yes. Okay, so the previous slides, I was just talking about the privilege. Okay. Uh, can you make it a full screen? I think it, it is already full screen. No, I'm in the uh, slideshow. Yeah. Yes. We are able to see the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, so um, disclaimers I've already talked about. So you've got to be aware of it. So coming to the prevalence, so minimum of 70% to 96% of us are adults are deficient in vitamin D. So what is the prevalence like, you know, from every category, the elderly to normal adults to lactating women, pregnant women, it has not spared the infants as well. It's definitely an alarm bell for all of us. So coming to the infantile uh, vitamin D deficiency, if you see even in India, it's going up to a few uh, percent, which, is, which needs to be considered, uh, you know, very close to, uh, in, in, in fact, it's not spared even the developed countries like the US. So... Are we, are, why are we not getting uh, vitamin D, enough vitamin D? Are we getting enough or we are not? What is the cause? What's happening around us? Why is it prevalent like this? So thanks to the million dollar cosmetic uh, uh, you know, sector, uh, sunscreen lotions are widely used and the summers in uh, North is so badly hit that you, know, you have no choice but to cover yourself, right? Mostly nearly about six to eight months of uh, you know, the season is summers here in the North. So, and a big menace in the present situation where as children, we used to play a lot of outdoor games. Unfortunately, with technology comes the menace like this, the indoor games, especially gluing to the screens like this and you know, Children are kind of addicted to the video games and obviously they do not want to go out and play. They haven't even enjoyed the outdoor games. So this is definitely a big menace in the society and in turn, you know, leading to vitamin D deficiency, especially in the children. 
So what are the causes of uh, vitamin D deficiency? Lack of adequate exposure to sun. We just saw the two reasons. Lack of vitamin D in the diet. This again, I'm sure it can be debatable. However, as dietitians, we know so there are certain limitations even in our food intake. Also the low RDAs, you know, recommended dietary allowances uh, for each country, it is different and uh, probably it is much low. In, in terms of uh, what we are seeing uh, in today's scenario, the kind of deficiencies we are able to see, inability to absorb from the intestine. So most of the uh, clients we have or the general population have some of the other issues with the intestine. Obviously, if the gut health is not good, nothing, no other nutrients, no nutrients can be absorbed well. Added to that, the inability to process vitamin D. If your liver health, the kidney health is not, is not adequate, it is, if it's not optimum, the process of the, the building of, the synthesis of vitamin D is affected. However, another cause is also magnesium deficiency. We'll come to it a little later. Endocrine disruptors, the environmental factor, the kind of food we are eating, chemically processed food are playing a major role as in endocrine disruptors. And genetic polymorphism, wherein the gene receptors, the vitamin D receptors may not be completely expressing themselves. This could also be one of the causes of our absorption of vitamin D in the body and its utilization. So, as we knew earlier, when we were studying, when we were graduating, all that we had in mind or in the general population about vitamin D was bone health to reduce rickets. In fact, it's just the tip of the tip iceberg. If we see what vitamin D can do, how it influences, how it affects, how it can help other diseases, getting rid of other diseases, starting from allergies to asthma, which is again the respiratory tract, you know, where I think we don't need more proof than what we got in the past two, to, uh, past two years with the pandemic around. Uh, then autism, cancer, the latest research in, is, is all on, on cancer, vitamin D and cancer, cardiovascular disease, chronic pain, cold and flu. Can you believe even dental cavities is attributable to vitamin D deficiencies? And as an autoimmune disease, vitamin, uh, your diabetic, Type 1 diabetes is also closely associated with vitamin D deficiency, eczema, fetal growth impairment, gestational diabetes, growth and development, preeclampsia, you know, like in PIH, you know, even in PIH, there's a major role of vitamin D indirectly uh, because it has relationship with, with uh, in absorption of calcium, prenatal infection, preterm birth. So this is what the present scenario is. So vitamin D is just beyond treating rickets in today's scenario. So what is vitamin D? And hence, since vitamin D is synthesized in the body, it has a target organ, then it, it, it works at the cellular level and it affects every part of our system from head to toe. So can we call it a hard work? I think we won't be wrong. So synthesis of vitamin D and see its impact on different system that we need to take care of for the general well-being. So the most important is uh, the latest research is, is on with cancer cells where it is seen to inhibit clonal proliferation and of course hematopoiesis. So that your entire blood production is dependent also on your vitamin D. Immune system, I, th I think we recently witnessed this then coming to the intestine, absorption of other nutrients like calcium and phosphate also depends on your vitamin D condition. Of course, bone health is inevitable. Also, the parathyroid hormone, it has an inverse relationship with vitamin D. So vitamin D receptors, how they, how they influence each and every aspect of our uh, system is what this uh, picture depicts cell proliferation, differentiation, and apoptosis. That itself is self-explanatory. Even the skin and the hair, the uh, cognitive uh, learning, the cognitive process, calcium, of course, we knew that even earlier. So here is where 
the vitamin uh, D receptors have control over every part of our body, every system in our body. So the active form of uh, vitamin D calcitriol has seen to be influencing every aspect of these conditions, autoimmune dis diseases, hypertension, psoriasis, sun damage, diabetes, tuberculosis, leprosy, leprosy. Osteoporosis was something which we knew earlier, but today's scenario, it's more of, in the, in the, even in, the, uh, in, in reducing the risk of uh, cancer, a lot of research that are on and documented. So what, what really vitamin D does, apart from the bone health, you know, it reduces the risk of flu, it reduces the risk of cancer, aches and pain. It, is in, it influences the better uh, cardiovascular disease. It reduces depression, <laughs> reduces diabetes, and in certain autoimmune conditions like uh, you know, the MS and uh, no, it, it has a major influence, especially in the IBS too. So osteoporosis is quite evident. So apart from this, it has an impact as a gene modulator. So these, these are the latest uh, research about uh, vitamin D wherein it acts on the genetic level. It suppresses the, it, it suppresses the bad uh, gene and uh, expression of good gene is also possible with the right adequate optimum dose of vitamin D. So what does the RDA say? For rickets, see what we know, you know in the literature or that we are following in the past is this, if the serum uh, vitamin D levels are 20 nanogram per ml is, is, is what desire that was said sometime back in, 2000, in 2010. So, which became the standard world standard. And the recommended dose was RDA was 400 to 800 IV per day. So, is that good enough for us to sustain and uh, take care of all these aspects of the disease and health? So, this is where the picture is. So, according to this, what we require is recommended dietary allowance is 400 to 600 international units. If we move ahead, this, it says it is not adequate. Why? After we came, we came across this theory of the big vitamin D mistake. Because earlier it was expected that the serum level of vitamin D, even if it is 20 NG per ml, was sufficient enough. But today the scenario is different. The target should be at least 40, 40 to 60 or 40 to 80 is the recommended one for which the need of RDA is 9,000 international unit per day. There is no comparison to 400 to 9,000, right? What's next? So this is the target level that is especially for the medical staff workers because we are more prone for, we are more prone for infections. And hence this, this categorically says, you know, this is the range we should be in, all the medical practitioners. And if we, you, you can just, uh, this graph clearly tells uh, anything between 20 to, 20 to 40, what is that it, it is influencing? And somewhere between 40 to 60, see the wide range of uh, risk that is reduced, you know, including hypertension to heart attack, to osteoporosis, pancreatic cancer, renal cancer, breast cancer. So the target now is not 20 NG per ml. It should be somewhere between 40 to 60 after knowing the function of vitamin D. It's just not restricted to the bone health. So are we getting enough? In spite of all that, in spite of the recommended optimal 9,000 to 10,000 IU per day, people who are obese may require more because... They, their vitamin D is not well utilized in the body because of the excessive adipose tissue, the sequestered uh, fashion of, uh, the, which is, you know, which means the vitamin D is deposited in the adipose tissue. It is just safe and it's just not doing anything. It is inactive there. So obese people need more vitamin D uh, with more than, than, any norm, than the normal uh, BMI. Old age, of course, the utilization again reduces in, in older age. So hence the dose needs to be uh, increased. Ethnic group, 
depending on the skin color. In fact, earlier it used to be believed that you know people in the tropical region do not have uh, vitamin D deficiencies. It's proved wrong. It's just the other way around because of the melanin content in our uh, our kind of skin. We need more. You know, we we need more of the uh, vitamin D dose for it to be for it to be utilized. So long term intake is supposed to be you know uh, at least ten thousand IU. So this looks a bit, uh, you know, not acceptable, right? Because 400 to 10,000, 1,000, you know, it's, there's no comparison. So here is where we stand. So if, if you just uh, look at this picture, so the target, what we should be aiming for in the, uh, the blood levels, uh, the vitamin D levels in the blood is 40 to 80 NG per ml. However, the endocrine society says it should be between 30 to 100 and laboratory testing again 30 to 200. So what as citizens, as, uh, uh, you know, uh, as practitioners, as having, as someone who's in the healthcare profession, especially as dietitians, this is one thing we should be aware of and be conscious about this and also educate our clients about the same. So vitamin D concentration of 60 to 80 NG per ml is needed to reduce the ca cancer risk. And hence, and hence today, you know, you know the importance of vitamin D, why it has to be, it, 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 is in, it has to be taken in a much higher dose than we think. So again, no observed, so what we really fear is, you know, again, 400 to 10,000 toxicity. You know, fat soluble vitamin, it could lead to toxicity. So it is proven, it is proven by European Food Society Authority, Food Safety Authority that there is no observed adverse effect levels vitamin D has caused, even with thousand international units per day for adults, four thousand international units per day for young adolescents, and two thousand for children. So if you do not supplement today, you will be needing medicines tomorrow. Why? Because you are more prone for all these diseases, which we just discussed. So these are the supplement recommended supplementation. Even in fact, um, uh, some of the, uh, you know, I have this uh, very good friend uh, of mine who's an orthopedic and he, he says the pulse therapy should be six lakh international units, one shot. So however, the osteoporosis society accepted but the endocrine society says, okay, that can be given, given, but not injectable, orally it can be given. So the pulse therapy is that high. So what really happens is when, even when we recommend this kind of doses, so uh, the client listens to the pharmacist more than the nutritionist or the uh, you know, clinician. So the pharmacist is like, you say, oh, this needs to be taken only once in a month or once in 15 days, you know, it, where we have recommended maybe five days at a stretch and then with the interval. So this kind of a myth is there. So it is for us to bring about the awareness among the people, among the population, so that they are not deficient in vitamin D. Something that is that comes for free, you know, we always take it for granted. How many of us really bathe, have a sun bath? Well, so for immediate protection, it is 40 to 60 ng per nanogram nano, uh, uh, per ml is what we should be maintaining. So this is something I think all of us as a dietitians, we need to have in our mind, this is the new norm. So that's the, that's the hammer dose. I can just uh, share this, uh, uh, this particular slide also. So definitely you should be discussing along with your clinic, the, the treating clinician uh, for your patients, and then we need to consider this. So what are the other micronutrients uh, that help in the absorption and utilization of vitamin D in the body? So it's the magnesium. In fact, uh, magnesium is uh, underrated and calcium is overrated. So it's just the reverse, you know, it should be the magnesium, uh, uh, the, the better amount of magnesium you know, there is better absorption vitamin D. However, with calcium, there is hyper uh, uh, calcium in the uh, body, so which can cause plaques. So definitely magnesium is another neglected uh, nutrient. Selenium, of course, is, is an all-rounder. So is zinc, riboflavin, and by vitamin B12, which we will talk about a little later, omega-3 fatty acids. So we need this army 
to take care of the utilization of vitamin D, which is again is behaving like a hormone in our body. So how do we avoid toxicity? There are a few parameters that we need. Usually the toxicity is very, very, very rare. However, this is how we are going to monitor. Look at the PTH levels. Ionized uh, calcium levels needs to be checked. And of course, balancing the magnesium, supplementation with magnesium and hydration is very important. Limited dietary calcium. This is exactly what I told, you know. While we are giving vitamin D, it's not the calcium that we should be focusing upon because that leads to hyperabsorption of calcium. However, what needs to be done is magnesium needs to be supplemented and not so much of calcium. So considering the potential benefit and very minimal or no toxicity, isn't it, it, it is our duty, responsibility and an obligation to make sure that our population is benefiting by this particular hormone, which is vitamin D. So vitamin D is not an optional supplement. It is a non-negotiable cellular necessity. It is your life health support system. And together, once we bring about the awareness among ourselves and the people we are going to treat, educate them, this is how we are going to make a difference to people's life and then to the society. So now, along with vitamin D, why, is, why did I take uh, vitamin B12? So this is, again, uh, a very interesting thing. In spite of uh, you know, it, it being a water-soluble uh, uh, vitamin, and also, you know, we all know that it, the sources are very few, especially for the vegetarians. Right? Even for the non-vegetarians, we are not taking in that amount as it usually, you know, how much it benefits as far as the RDA is concerned. So again, RDA is again, uh, it's, it's dependent on individual also. So now coming to uh, the major function of uh, vitamin B12. So we all know, you know, when it comes to B12, the first thing that strikes is, okay, anemia, you know, it's, 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 it helps produce RBCs normal functioning of brain and nervous system. These are the key roles of vitamin B12. They are so important and they are so much neglected. Involved in the metabolism of every cell, especially affecting the DNA synthesis. We are going to take especially the, this part of the DNA synthesis part of this function of vitamin B12 to join hands with vitamin D. However, it also has a major role in fatty acid, fatty acid metabolism and amino acid metabolism. So these are the various forms of vitamin B12. I'm sure you know, we need not go detail into it. And uh, the supplements that is available is again methylcobalamin, that is uh, quite a common uh, form of supplements that is available. So if you look at this particular picture, I think you have to strain your eyes a bit uh, because it's too small. So if you look at this, even vitamin B12 affects everything from head to toe, your hair to your toes. So it is affecting your skin and hair. It has a major role in weight control because lack of vitamin D means poor lipid metabolism. In fact, uh, vitamin B12 is uh, necessary for fat catabolism. In, that is how we can relate it to obesity. So weight control is definitely, you know, we need to control weight. Make sure your patients are getting good amount of B12. So GI uh, tract, of course, uh, again, the gut bacteria, the gut health is dependent on how, how healthy is your gut. So this major supplementation here is, again, vitamin B12. So uh, we just see ahead all these aspects of uh, these uh, importance of vitamin B12 is explained in the further slide. So this is more clear. So if you look into it, you know, it's neurology, neurological factor, peripheral neuropathy, especially those with diabetes and elderly people, you get to see this peripheral neuropathy where good dose of vitamin B12, you know, gives a magical relief to them. So cognitive impairment, dementia, uh, gait abnormalities, loss, you know, this uh, olfactory nerve impairment, everything is, you know, this is a plethora of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, disease that uh, B12 can take care of. 
by just supplementing it, giving it, giving the body its due. So surprisingly, uh, we we have definitely seen you know uh, our patients having poor uh, you know uh, poor concentration, irritability, and uh, somehow you know there are mood swings. So we, especially women, we we blame it on uh, maybe you know we are approaching the men menopause, we are in the very menopausal phase. Probably nothing of this. We might just be having vitamin B12 deficiency. That is why we need to focus on the basics that forms the health. So again, um, in the further uh, slides, we will see how how it it helps uh, take care of the cardiac health. And uh, of course, gynecological uh, uh, aspect of it, vaginal atrophy is seen with a deficiency, chronic deficiency of vitamin B12, and miscarriages, low, uh, lowered fertility. Infertility, of course, is again uh, associated with uh, low B12. So weight loss, headache, osteoporosis, coming to the detailed uh, study of this. So one aspect of vitamin B, uh, vitamin B12 deficiency we are looking at is methylation, methylation process. So what really happens is B12 is more of a coenzyme, cofactor for many reactions in the body, for synthesis of amino acids, right? So if there is deficiency of vitamin B12, there are cascade of deficiencies that can happen. So we'll just walk through it quickly and uh, it goes something like this. So whenever there is deficiency of vitamin B12, there is hypomethylation of the compounds. So what can that lead to? So th this leads to, I'm, I'm really sorry because this, uh, it's, it's, I think the font is very small. So basically when it comes to endocrinology, poor vitamin B12 is, which means poor regulation of insulin. This is the crux and these are the trial that has been seen, made and uh, documented. Coming to neurodegeneration, Alzheimer's. You know, early Alzheimer's is associated with chronic low B12 levels versus healthy brain where your B12 is optimal. Neuropsychiatry, in fact, hallucination, mood swings. In fact, this has gone up to uh, increased levels of dopamine because of hypomethylation. And this is in case of schizophrenic patients. So, See how deep it is, and the people are treated uh, with uh, psychotic drugs and a lot of things. Probably, if we look into the basics like B12, you know, replenish it with the basic thing, probably the patient will not go to that uh, stage of uh, psychiatry treatment. So, and in obstetrics, yes, the kind of neural deficiencies, you know, like wherein uh, uh, whatever scans we do, level one, level two. So, as a trial, as a protocol, if even, you know, when, when, a, when a couple plan for pregnancy uh, or when it is, uh, when the woman is positive for pregnancy, these are the certain parameters that we should be looking into. So this can reduce the neural tube defects to a greater extent. And ophthalmology, in fact, this was something that was very surprising. In fact, I was reading this for the first time it could even lead to blindness. This was something like an eye-opener for me. So see how much, how important, how, uh, uh, you know, what an impact it has on overall general health and are we really aware of it? So oncology, again, you know, uh, if you look at it, if you look at the function of vitamin D and B12, more or less, you know, they are catering to the same uh, needs. You know, they are having a similar, uh, uh, you know, function. However, B12, with B12, vitamin uh, D function is even better with, with optimum B12. So I uh, come to this particular uh, statement a little later, maybe in a Q&A also. So this is again uh, the documentation, the trial that has been proven that vitamin B12 has a major role in oncology, urology, and GI surgeries. Orthopedic, yes, again, bone resorption is also dependent because utilization of vitamin D is also dependent on the amount of B12 that is present in the, uh, in the serum. But, so this was, uh, uh, this particular theory was proven and uh, uh, shown how 
uh, DNA hypomethylation and cardiovascular diseases are so closely related. And with a lack of vitamin B12, how homocysteine levels will go up. So also increased cases of blocks with vitamin B12 deficiency, it's just not hypercalcium or it's just not high lipid. Since it is also involved in the lipid metabolism, obviously every, every nutrient should do its job. If, if there is an imbalance, definitely it will lead to some, some disaster like this. So never uh, had we thought, you know, vitamin B12, lack of vitamin B12 may lead to cardiovascular disease. It's, it's just not the lipid that we should be blaming on. So this is a known theory. And of course, all every diabetes educator, every dietitian is well informed with this particular aspect of metformin and the poor absorption of vitamin B12. So all the more care for the people who are on anti-diabetic drugs. So this is the recommendation of American Dietetics Association. And uh, what we have to see is how many of us are really monitoring this for our clients. In, in fact, we think, uh, you know, is, is it looking at, uh, in looking at it in terms of cost effectiveness, you know, why, why to get it done, you know, maybe they are okay, their diet looks okay. No, there's nothing harm in just getting it done because you may be assessing it right or wrong, but when it is in black and white, you know, it strikes the client. It strikes the client and they will be told, they will, they can be, they will listen to you when you supplement them with the B12 or vitamin D, whatever recommendations you have. So this is another very interesting part uh, I really liked about vitamin B12. It has an analgesic effect. I was just wondering, how is that possible? So uh, a lot of studies uh, showed that, especially in the nerve conduction, because it has a major role in the uh, formation of the myelin shield, you know, methyl cobalamin. So uh, when, uh, in, in fact, uh, I have also seen people with uh, neuralgia, people with uh, uh, neuropathy, when they were given higher dose of methyl cobalamin and they said, you know, uh, Madam, you know, it's like, I just took this injection and I'm, I'm so much better as if I never had this problem. So uh, definitely it is a very good analgesic and uh, it hardly has any side effects. It's, it, it really won't take a toll on your kidneys. So these are the importance of uh, the two nutrients that we have in hand right now and bone remodeling. So if you just look at this, how beautifully it is influencing uh, the bone remodeling cycle. So it's just not one thing that is required. So we talk about bone health, it's just not vitamin D. Join hands with vitamin B12 also for a better effect of uh, bone formation and reducing osteoporosis. So this is again, um, I think all of us know, uh, but High serum homocysteine is, so, is strongly associated. It's just not about heart. It is also about the bone. So with all this, look at the prevalence. Look at the prevalence. Even, even in a, a country like United Kingdom, there's 20% prevalence. And United States, 20%. And we, it's 50 to 70% of uh, deficiencies is prevalent in India. So isn't it high time for us to tap this particular area when we talk about overall well-being. So together we can bring better health. So B12 and vitamin D. As dietitians, let us have this as a protocol, as a test that we will get it done for our clients when they visit us. Because I think each one of us have experienced this. When uh, uh, the, the very notion of a dietitian or a nutritionist, people have in mind is, what people have in mind is, is all about weight loss. When we talk about overall well-being, overall health, you know, all the, they will be listening, they will smile, and then they'll say, all the, then at the end, they will ask, you know, madam, how many kilos in one month? How many kilos am I going to lose in one month? So all that they have in their mind is, this is the kind of, um, uh, this is the amount of weight I need to lose. But when you probe a bit and ask them, okay, we are going to take care of your weight loss, what else do you experience? Do you have mood swings? Say, Ah, yes, I do have. Do you have bloating? Do you have any acidity? And then they come out. Yes, I feel this. I feel fatigued. I just don't like uh, talking to anybody. It's, maybe it is uh, I'm nearing menopause. Um, you know, I just don't like anybody. I don't like being, uh, being social. And I, and I feel lethargy and fatigue all the time. But my diet is okay. 
you know that is when they come up with this that is when we if we have these tests in hand and we say look at this your b12 is low your vitamin d is low that is the reason you're going through all this it's just not menopause don't blame it on menopause like how every obese patient uh, who has thyroid says i have thyroid and hence i will remain obese it's not so that's not the story we have to change the scenario and we we must be the game changers for them isn't it so that is why you know that is why i urge you you know each one of us please look into these two aspects of every patient whether they come for whether they come for treatment for diabetes or weight loss or whatever so let us educate ourselves let us educate our clients so that they have a better health thank you so much over to you mayuri <laughs> thank you chaya thank you it, indeed it was a in detail explanation and yes i mean very my i mean few quotes where you have quoted you know uh, uh, are alarming uh, quotes yes yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a really uh, a very well very well presented excellent information you have given us and that this video will be a reference uh, for uh, all the dietitians to look into beet pal and please do please do because uh, uh, we have this opportunity because uh, people trust us when we talk yes. see even even on a first follow up they come they have lost about say 2 kilos in 10 days they are more receptive to you that mm. is when you say see this these are your blood reports i have seen uh, people like vitamin d in single digit oh yes uh, yes right. and invariably you know it's like you know that is why you feeling fatigue hair fall in fact people have come up and told after i i took these medicine the hair fall is gone completely it's i'm absolutely fine in the meantime what they would be doing they go to the skin specialist trying this therapy that therapy because the and nobody has got their vitamin d or b12 test done you know they are not even aware True. so they, and they don't even know what single digit of vitamin d means that means yes. you know you're you're gone from head to toe right. yes you can stop the screen share any uh, any uh, any standard uh, specification uh, recommendations uh, regarding b12 and uh, any uh, time period anything because yeah. that is not there so, uh, the safest is uh, the, that which uh, definitely has uh, shown a very good uh, improvement uh, result plus with no toxicity and very convenient is uh, 1500 mcg it could be tablet it could be sublingual strip Uh, it could be an injection so 1500 uh, mcg per day every day for life every day for life is is what the recommendation for uh, even the normal normal uh, yes, yes. so called normal <laughs> so normal individuals <laughs> okay because even for normal it's it's ranging somewhere between 300 to 400 so that is not sufficient enough and we see the range and we think we are normal It, right. anything about 800 is fair enough even with that kind of a uh, result in the report we should be supplementing ourselves okay and uh, what about the veg supplementation of b12 veg supplementation so yeah. as far as food is concerned i don't think uh, see no 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 uh, these days we are getting that veg capsules of vitamin b12 and also how i mean is that uh, really uh, what yeah, taking yeah. i'm sure it is ultimately it has to be taken in the higher dose in okay. fact uh, there is this new thing coming up wherein uh, they are giving 5000 uh, mcg per per day okay uh, yeah yeah where uh, people with neuralgia and uh, neural uh, problem peripheral uh, neuropathy this is the kind of dose it has been given for a month or two okay. and uh, yeah and, and it is reported uh, you know like can you believe in the uh, in the age of 70s and 80s uh, people are just feeling fit their gait being normal and in fact i have seen that i have fortunately i have very good friends of uh, you know very good group of uh, friends who are doctors and we on and off discuss and you know the, they come up with you know osteoporosis society endocrine society you know we discuss and then you know that is how you know we kind of educate each other and you know help each other help clients so this is the latest one that is uh, been recommended okay yeah. 
So audience, Chaya Mishra is here. So you any questions, you can just ask your questions and get your doubts clarified. If not 1500 uh, MCG every day, is there any other uh, option? Uh, like a once in a month or once in 15 days, once in a yeah, week? Yeah, once in, in a month or once in 15 days, uh, it's, uh, uh, there is one particular dose, I don't know if I've noted it down, injectable once in a month is good enough. So uh, like somebody like me, you know, I'm very bad at uh, compliance with medications. <laughs> so I won't be able to do it, you know, every day. So I would prefer a shot once a month and I'm done for the month. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. Because since it is, uh, B12 is uh, water soluble, will it, will it be there in the system mm. or how do we uh, talk about, it, about this? Uh, yeah, since it is water soluble, uh, uh, vitamin and uh, it is also uh, see it, it is stored in the liver up to I think uh, six it, it's about 30 days or so however I think half-life of vitamin D is 15 days uh, okay. I clearly don't remember about B12 yeah okay it's really good uh, you, know, you know we uh, all these vitamins minerals uh, salts these are actually life supporting systems right, right. Uh, uh, carbohydrate proteins and fats are the fuels but uh, right. these are the life supporting system one actually need, uh, need to look into these systems once upon a time uh, nutrition subject thrived on uh, defic studying deficiencies like you know marasmus kashwakar protein energy malnutrition those kind of things right. but right. now we uh, the system uh, we have to look into micronutrients micronutrients of course there's a big micro, micronutrient uh, initiative also throughout right. the world, but uh, uh, still, but it is not, I mean, people are not so well aware, but definitely I think pandemic has created a lot of awareness regarding right. vitamin C, zinc and vitamin D. People yeah. very daringly go and uh, uh, buy the medication from the uh, pharmacist and they, they, are, they have their own medications taking, you know, you know, supplementation they keep taking. That's but, uh, sometimes when we... Uh, recommend uh, uh, any client they say we are already taking also right so that kind of awareness is also there with the pandemic so as nutritionists when we talk about the gut health you know uh, mm. so we, we like you know take care of your gut and everything else will be taken care of automatically yes so especially vitamin b12 and vitamin d are known to reduce ibs yes okay Uh, Does it so, prevent also, uh, for example, for example, if uh, uh, the I, once IBS is a kind of uh, always IBS, provided the conditions no, it apply, also, it, is, it is reversal. It is reversal. Uh, okay. One study says, you know, these kind of supplementation, of course, uh, first of all, reducing the trigger and uh, replenish the micronutrients. Replenish okay. the micronutrients. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We have a question on Facebook. Uh, Neil and Jane is asking, is it possible having vitamin B12 toxicity due to supplements can uh, cause lack of vitamin D? Can cause lack of vitamin, vitamin D. So toxicity of uh, uh, vitamin B12 is uh, not uh, so documented. Uh, and uh, as I told, you know, uh, it, even if it is uh, 5,000 uh, MCG per day, also it is not known to be toxic. And definitely uh, not having adequate B12 will also reduce the utilization of vitamin D2. Right. So we, we, we bring them both hand in hand. I think they do a great job together. Gut uh, microbiota has anything to do with uh, absorption of these vitamins naturally? Definitely, yes. Definitely, yes. So when we talk about gut microbiota, uh, what really comes into mind is the gene modulation. Uh, hmm. Vitamin D's role of vitamin D at the genetic level. Okay. So, uh, so that is how, you know, high supplementation of uh, vitamin D has definitely uh, get, given better gut health. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Dr. Suresh Kumar Garu. Oh, Dr. Suresh is here. Hello, ma'am. How are you? Long Hi, time. Suresh. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 
Yeah, ma'am, uh, I have this question because when we look at uh, certain uh, parameters, especially biochemical parameters, so we give a range. Say, for example, fasting blood sugar has got a range, and most of the <clears throat> nutrients they do they do have a range. But when it comes to vitamin B12, so it always uh, intrigues me why there is like is a huge. Uh, range okay <laughs> uh, how did they come up and uh, how you can say that okay why this huge spectrum huge range i mean is there any scientific reason behind that uh, i think uh, dr suresh you are a better person to answer this and honestly speaking because of that wide range you know i never take that 5 till 600 i take it as deficiency only <laughs> that is why okay. you are doing things uh, yeah <laughs> so uh, why i'm asking this is, is a practical thing so as healthcare professionals when people say that okay you probably you are deficient in and uh, they say like 200 300 i am not deficient even 500 i am not deficient but i it still like intrigues me like why people are uh, uh, doing like okay how did they come up with this so i yeah. thought like i i think for this uh, dr suresh what as dietitians here we can do is we can just show them the evidence based results okay even if the client is questioning i seem to be normal i in the, in the normal range it's 300 to 400 we would say okay just take this for a week and let us see how you're feeling so number one right. assuring them there will be no toxicity just try it for one week and it hmm. will make a difference it will make yeah. a difference right the range is <laughs> probably to cover the range of uh, uh, issues the individual might be facing again i think also the body composition your body weight uh, you know I, i think it is very individualized i think and in in spite of that see that is the circulating uh, cobalamin right so how much are we absorbing how much are we utilizing how much the body is utilizing so that is another story altogether yeah totally different that is uh, yeah. other side other side of the yeah sometimes uh, you see when you see uh, you know the calcium range is normal in the blood however there is calcium deficiency because there is always bone resorption calcium right. resorption and it tries to maintain the level but that's not the parameter to check you know they have uh, calcium deficiency so when they are in twitching muscular pain cramps and all that you just give them calcium they do better so is it to, to do with the local deficiency in the body could be it's it's could it could be the utilized utilization no individuals utilization individuals gut gut health how much how much are the nutrients being absorbed how much it's been again the cofactor so uh, as though we talk we spoke about vitamin d and uh, b12 the other factors like zinc magnesium especially you know now the uh, things are different uh, people uh, the orthos Uh, they are giving uh, they're not giving vitamin d supplementation along with calcium it is vitamin d along with magnesium they say on the contrary reduce the uh, intake of calcium supplementation because hypocalcemia cal calcemia is going to be there so they say instead bring in uh, magnesium so i think as we move ahead we'll discover a lot of such things and uh, as of now i think 15 uh, 1500 mcg per day <laughs> b12 is fair enough <laughs> to keep us happy actually this discussion uh, uh, leads us at uh, mayuri i think we should uh, more look into all micronutrients the talk yes, needs yes, to be on yes. micronutrients here after we yes. try to do more of on micronutrients micronutrients yes very true doctor and uh, uh, the role of vitamin b12 in a sports person again where you know the uh, the muscle thing is there right yeah mm. if you can production of atp energy production you yeah. need to have b12 you need to have it that that's one key role of b12 and even the muscle uh, the uh, muscle contraction and relaxation part also again where it is very much needed i guess right absolutely yeah absolutely. we have b12 so drinks also indirectly indirectly it affects yeah indirectly it, yeah. it, it affects the absorption of uh, uh, vitamin d vitamin d further the absorption of calcium so they have a cascade effect right so that is how indirectly it is influencing uh, the muscle the function right uh, samata you can ask your question you have you have raised your hand yeah okay. yes ma'am good evening to all of you Uh, Chaya, ma'am, the presentation is so impressive and informative. 
seriously it's like you know for uh, anyone who is appearing for the exam they just go watch this video <clears throat> we could answer anything in related to vitamin d and b12 ma'am great presentation thank you samantha thank you so much <laughs> uh mam ma coming to uh, patients with osteomalacia mm. <clears throat> does uh, supplementing them with b12 i mean testing their levels for b12 and uh, vitamin d and supplementing with the same uh, helps them with the bone pain yeah. and, uh, the, and the muscle see, weakness yeah see when you're talking about osteomalacia which means you already know the person has osteomalacia yeah. at that point of time i don't think it is required to do the test instead you give the recommended dose right okay. you give the hammer dose which i just uh, you know said yeah, yeah. so if at all the, uh, if the vitamin d is in single uh, digit then please go for the pulse dose which is 6 lakh international units at one go and then after 15 days you will give once a week 60k right along with calcium for few days stop it withdraw that and magnesium supplement okay. with magnesium of course there are combination of vitamin d and b12 also these days right mm -hmm. so this is again not missing the b12 so if if it is not in combination give b12 separately in fact b12 injectables are also recommended okay so it is like the initial uh, two weeks would be 60000 uh, units so every day dose ma'am yes is it In, in fact, uh, it also goes like this, you know, sixty sixty k IU for ten days, right? Then okay. fifteen days after, once a week. Okay, ma'am. Right. Then you will have to check the uh, levels after two months, and you can decide decide the maintenance dose. Okay, that would be like a monthly dose, right, ma'am? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Monthly dose so. or daily dose. Whether it is uh, five IU, five thousand international units, or ten thousand international units, how they have to so depending on what are the levels because half life of vitamin D is fifteen days. Mm -hmm. So after dosing, replenishing dose, you have to check the levels and then decide on the maintenance dose. And of okay. course, uh, the the patient needs to be counselled about uh, you know uh, good uh, right diet and activity and all of this. It's it's a very comprehensive. process so sometimes the drawback with supplementation is you know the moment you give supplementation and if they are off pain and they are feeling great they think oh they run for life then they eat whatever they want and you know need not work out and all that so we have to tell them you know so that is why it's the most difficult job for us so with actually you know, these muscle that, pain and bone yeah, pain the people on. Sorry? the person uh, with the muscle and the bone pain the person tends to be uh, you know afraid of taking the risk of you know doing exercise even for a walk it's yeah. like you know so that is their uh, ma'am they're physically i can say inactive right so that is when we have to say see at least with minimal reduction of pain we have to tell them your body is not used to the work and that is the reason it it pains when you start the work so do it with see uh, what happens is see our patients are either over enthusiastic or absolutely doing nothing so when they want a weight loss they are ready to run for 2 hours we have to scale it up we have to prepare somebody who's never done you know never walked for 2 3 months or a few years want to start off running day one so obviously the very next day with the muscle sores he will never he will say no to exercise and walk yeah so bringing their enthusiasm down and reasoning it okay you just start with 10 to 15 minutes of walk you know yeah start counseling a lot of counseling and yes yes it's all about counseling it's all about counseling and also ma'am coming to the um, <clears throat> the tests that we usually a gynecologist usually uh, uh, recommends for a pregnant woman mm -hmm. so you say vitamin b12 and d by default have to be included in their uh, initial test yes yes in fact uh, when i used to uh, counsel uh, my clients you know when they came for marriage uh, you know they want to lose weight for wedding and all that so once they learn when you have a rapport with them they understand they understand what you're trying to tell and we i tell them it's just not for wedding that you need to lose weight you are going to be like this forever you need to take care of yourself forever so i also tell them you know like when they plan their conception they need to consider their diet pre conception you know i even talk to them about the pre conception diet you know see what happens is 
the neural tube deficiency, folate and vitamin B12, right? By the time the lady realizes that she is pregnant, you know, that, that phase is yes. already gone. Ooh, yeah. That is why a preconception diet, a notion is very important. If you're planning in the coming three months, start taking whole white, start taking vitamin B12, check for all the parameters. You know, it's kind of, uh, you prepare yourself for the conception. So I think that comes with counseling. Yeah, I'm being proactive. Uh, yes, yes, you have to be proactive. Mm -hmm. Because these are something uh, probably the gynecologist will not also be having any time to counsel like this. Any other clinicians, nobody in the family are going to tell. So ultimately, uh, it falls on our shoulders because we know it, we have to tell it because it's for their well being. Yeah, they have to hire a dietitian in their clinics, ma'am. <laughs> Hospitals and clinics. Yes. Uh, yes. That's, and also that's, why, yeah, that's why we, we should call you know, general practitioners. Dr. Suresh says we are the next GPs. <laughs> and day, uh, some, somebody asked me, uh, what is your specialty? I said, uh, I'm a general practitioner. Nice. <laughs> because so, all, all kinds of uh, clients they do come, no? Right. True, right. ma'am. So, uh, one last question, uh, uh, ma'am. Is it okay I ask? Yes, yeah, yes. yeah, go ahead. Uh, regarding the gut health, we talk so much about gut health. Any few tips, like, you know, we uh, that you can give uh, Chaya, ma'am, uh, like to keep the gut health to the optimum? I think what's important is uh, it's not that I'm, uh, you know, kind of propagating vegetarian or anything. See, gut health, there is always some kind of inflammation, right? So while we talk about protein, see, whether we talk about vitamin uh, D or B12 or any nutrient, what we really need along with that is protein, right? There should be good amount of protein. However, if these proteins come from plant protein, it is known to have very little inflammation or no inflammation. Animal protein is known to cause inflammation in the gut. Okay. Right? This is one major thing. Secondly, the gut health is highly affected, you know, with intake of, excessive intake of sugars. Right. Mm -hmm. Right? And thirdly, of course, activity. Activity has a major role. Your anxiety levels, your meditation, you know, it's, it's again a holistic approach. Even if we leave the other part and Take, uh, take, consider only the diet. So these are the things, uh, high, uh, high oil intake, simple sugars, and animal protein. If you avoid these three things and take care of, uh, of the nutrients from the other sources, from the, you know, I think majorly we can tap. At least we'll hold the string that is going to give us results. Then again, a close follow-up with the dietitian definitely helps the uh, client come out of it. Uh, in fact, very soon I am going to share uh, one uh, uh, beautiful case uh, that uh, came up. In fact, I was so reluctant to put it on FB. I think with this, I must uh, do it. I, Maybe I, we can do a case study on TTOX, uh, Chaya, if it is yeah, such yeah. an interesting case. Yes, yes, it's a very interesting case. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm just like, you know, overwhelmed. <laughs> Course, Thank I, you so much, ma'am. I only really focus on the gut health, and that gave a major difference. Major difference. Psoriasis for 24 years, and in one year of treatment, it just vanished and hardly traces left. Awesome. Wow. Yeah. So, so Neelam Jain is. Food is asking, magical. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. No, uh, on the Facebook, uh, Neelan Jain is asking, 47-year-old female, uh, she was taking vitamin D and B12 both. Uh, B12 increased till the time it got toxic, but D is still less or the same. Uh, what could be, uh, that's her question. Again, I think uh, yeah, we have to see if they have taken vitamin D in what doses they have taken. Yeah. As I told you, you know, the replenishing dose should be higher. So if that has not happened again, it is, you know, uh, it's, it's the same situation. Same. Just like right. you're filling the pot that is, that's got cracked. Right. So you need to put that extra vitamin D and of course, uh, take, uh, make sure that the magnesium is not deficient. Right. 
So Shilpa Mittal says, excellent session and eye-opener, super presentation with scientific backing. Thank you, Shilpa. Coming from you is means a lot to me. <laughs> yeah. So audience, any more questions? Uh, Dr. Suresh, I did too much. Yes, uh, It's not actually, uh, yeah, it's not a question actually, because since uh, the topic of micronutrients, especially magnesium has come, Okay, so I mean, like when I was working with a hospital, I am working with an endocrinologist and I saw close to 2,500 thyroid patients. Okay, they were uh, uh, complaining about these body pains and all. They were given calcium supplementation and all these things. So, but uh, when I discussed with my endocrinologist and say that, okay, calcium and magnesium, they work in tandem. So why not we add this magnesium supplementation as well? So to our surprise, I mean, people responded very well. And the way magnesium helps, because magnesium is considered as anti-stress mineral. It's very difficult to detect magnesium deficiency, unless and otherwise the patient is like nearly sick or uh, like uh, having a severe electrolyte imbalances and all. But uh, as uh, Chaya rightly mentioned that we, we don't that frequently ask the clients to go through the required tests. As dietitians, we hesitate. Uh, asking them to go for this profiles, nutrient division. Yeah. In that, because given the kind of food that we are eating, so people are more tend to uh, have these micronutrient deficiencies and vitamin deficiencies. So if we, I experience with magnesium especially, so it helped them a lot. Yeah, that's I wanted to add. Thank you, thank you so much for your time. I think the soil factor, no. The soil factor. See, there are a lot of environmental changes over decades. Yes. And the soil has lots, lo lost its magnesium. And no matter what we think is the magnesium rich food may not be as much as it used to be at some point of time. True. Right. So, and hence the supplementation is required. True. New things uh, have come up actually and uh, Still, we, uh, we are on Discovery Channel. <laughs> <laughs> Nutrition is always on a Discovery Channel. Right. <laughs> dynamic. Very dynamic. Very dynamic. I mean, a uh, lot of uh, uh, factors, again, which influences the... I mean, just like uh, now what Chaya has mentioned, like soil is one other uh, factor which impacts the magnesium content in the food, ultimately, which is leading to a supplementation. So if you take and each and every nutrient or anything, you know, again, there is a holistic approach and a holistic perspective to look into that aspect. Uh, so definitely it is on Discovery Channel. <laughs> you are <running> Even, uh, <laughs> we are trying to do that. <laughs> we have, we have to, uh, let's discover nutrition is the new name now. We have to rename the detox. Detox. <laughs> Right. So even uh, Dr. Suresh's uh, uh, discovery uh, after seeing 2,500 thyroid Fish. patients is uh, not a small thing. I mean, that's a it, it itself is a big uh, big number. Study. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Nice. That is a good input. In fact, for me. So, what of thanks? It's really, really excellent uh, and a very good discussion has come up, and we have to uh, target target. Uh, 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 40, 80, <laughs> you know, vitamin D and the target 1500 <laughs> This is important. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much, Chaya, for being here on Tea Talks and giving us such an eye opener session and very, uh, you know, uh, a very alarming statements again, uh, where nutritionists, uh, you can uh, look into and you know take actions accordingly and thanks for being here on tea talks thank you so much shaya thank you, thank you. Uh, mayuri and dr jankit and thank you all the participants and uh, thank you both again for having me and looking forward to many such sessions we too we too we, we too. want you to <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thank you all that's for that's all for this tuesday see you all next tuesday same time same place bye for today bye bye Bye, bye.